and actually everybody else who is driving around this reserve. I don't quite know how the Birmingham boys managed to levitate into the centre of Juma, but somehow they managed it, because here they are. It looks like Tino and Mfumo. It's definitely Mfumo on the right. I can see that injury underneath his eyes. Hello, boys. You weren't here when I drove past earlier, neither were your footprints. No, they were not. What a pleasant surprise you are. This is the first time I've seen a male lion in about a month and a half. How lovely to have you back on Juma once again. Can you please go and speak to the Nkumas and tell them that it's okay and that you're back? Because they're so skittish at the moment. Well, I assume this is what was causing the alarm calls because I promise you there were no lions here when I drove past here first thing this morning. So they must still have been moving. And they've popped out here right, literally right in the center of Juma. What a lovely, lovely surprise. And then yesterday they were all the way on Manuleti, all four of them. They went from the Mala Mala boundary, all four of them, which is right to the south, and then went all the way into Manuleti, which is right to the north. All four of them, all together. So obviously banding back together again. And now here they are, looking a little hungry, in the case of Tinio. His hip bones sticking out just a little bit. Long time no seen. Where on earth did you come from? Because you did not leave a footprint, and even, even in this light and in these conditions, finding a male lion footprint is relatively easy. One of the easier ones to find. Fast asleep. Well, they have, to do, they have been doing a lot of walking. I'm sure that's what caused the alarm from the impala, but then that's why they relaxed so quickly. It's just the fact that these male lions are not, clearly not, on the hunt, and they're not keen on doing much at all. Let's have a look back again at Mfumo's face, just to see how he's doing. It's looking a little bit raw and a little bit pink, but still healthy enough. And considering how nasty that injury was before, I think it's healed up relatively well. He's lucky he didn't lose that eye. It's just, just below it. Shame, Mfumo. The right-hand side of your face has just been mauled. There's still puncture wounds up there. We can see f fly around them, sort of the beginning of his mane. And Fumo seems to be the most battle-scarred of the Birmingham boys. He really does just seem to acquire injuries every time we see him. But it is special to re-encounter these lions once again. They've been largely absent. Oh, and a broad-banded yellow. Just fluttering past, grass yellow, butterfly. I wish it would go and lie and rest on his mane. There's nothing like a surprise lion sighting. It's not the first time the Birmingham boys have done this to me in this area either. It just popped out. I agree, Justin. It seems as though our lions have learnt to utilize Karula's portal system. She's well known for disappearing in one spot and reappearing in the opposite side of the world. Not quite the world, opposite side of the reserve, without any of us knowing exactly how she got there. And it seems as though the male lions have learnt the same trick. They must have come from the eastern side of the reserve because I didn't pick up on any tracks coming and I've just done the whole western side of the northern boundary. So they must have come from there. And that would explain Karula's absence in this area. This is where, very close to where Taylor had her last night. That's not to discount her. She might be somewhere lurking, as could her cubs be. But they've picked a very picturesque spot to plonk themselves down. Now we just need a little bit of morning sunlight to make it even more beautiful. A massive puddle, it's actually a pan, next to them, so plenty of water to drink. And I know that, I happen to know that that mud hole is big enough for a hippo to sit in. It's actually deep enough to cover a hippo completely, and the only reason I know that is because I kept finding a hippo there at one point. 
And there we go on that subject. Buttons Cockatoo would like to know whether or not that is a new waterhole from all of the rain. Buttons, yes, it is. It, uh, it's not a new one. It's a well-established one, but it was completely dry and completely empty over sort of around the December-January period. And then when we got all of this rain, it's filled up nicely. So it is essentially would have started as a puddle that got bigger and bigger the more the different animals came to wallow in it. And this particular section of road has a couple of these where the mud wallows are actually so deep that they've become proper little water holes. So this is 100% natural. It hasn't been dug out by people and it is deep. As I said, it's deep enough to hide a hippo. So what a perfect spot to come if you're a male lion. There's always a chance of something perhaps coming for a drink that they could capitalize on. And at the same time, they've got plenty of water, plenty of shade. All in all, the perfect spot. <laughs> I love surprises like this. Our sofa tato, you want to know how tall they are in terms of feet. Over three feet at the shoulder for these male lions. And I just want to... Obviously this one is quite spread-eagled and flat, but if I give you a comparison of what they look like next to us, next to the vehicle. So if I'm sitting here and a Birmingham male comes past me, you're looking at his shoulders being around about here. Can you see that there, Craig? Yeah. His shoulders being around about here, the top of his head around about here. So when they turn and look at me, I can almost look them directly in the eye. They're just a little, little bit below me. So they are absolutely massive cats. I was actually watching Kevin Richardson. I was just before I went on drive yesterday. I was watching a little bit of stuff that he was he was busy cuddling his lions, and we'll go into that in a minute. But he was busy playing with his male lions and picking the ticks off them, and it gives you a really good idea of a sense of scale, of just how massive these cats are. When he comes and he tries to pick up their heads, and they're just this big. It really is a truly astounding thing. Now, Kevin, of course, uh, we always talk about the fact that you don't cuddle lions. Kevin cuddles his lions, but they are rescued lions, and he doesn't breed with them, and he doesn't let anybody else do it. So he's taken them away from the bad life that they would have had, the lions that can't be released back into the wild. And he keeps them, he uses, he uses them, instead of making money off tourists coming in to pet them, which is a dangerous thing, and it will invariably result in an injury at some point. Instead of doing that, he actually basically uses them to learn more about lions. So when scientists come in, they can do, because those lions are so relaxed around people, they can do tests with them in terms of how lions pick their prey, how they compare in terms of intelligence with puzzles and so on. So much better than the life of a zoo lion, obviously, and he's, he says the same thing. It would be ideal if those animals were living wild, but since they can't, due to animal intervention, he tries to give them the best possible life that he can. It was fascinating. I really enjoyed watching that. I haven't thought about Kevin Richardson in a long time. I'm impressed with his bravery. Hold on, there's a monkey alarm calling. That's probably Karula. Ooh, now what to do? These lions aren't going anywhere, and those we're going to miss Karula if we don't go now. I think let's go. Let's go follow up there. Oh, I can't.